Yeah. Today I want to talk about my time working at Bank of America. And uh, I worked for Bank of America for 11 years. And it was crazy. And one thing I got to say is that a lot of the customers were fucking assholes. And I'm not talking about the customers that were like legitimately mad because of shit that Bank of America did. Because there was some fucked up shit Bank of America would do. I'm talking about the ones who were just fucking miserable and they would just talk shit no matter what like they were they didn't have good days like they just wanted to feel tough on the phone and shit like there were a lot of those people and um but what's crazy is when i first started at bank of america i didn't know shit i didn't have a checking account i didn't have a credit card i didn't know shit about banks all i knew how to do was kind of uh like mimic the way other people speak and shit you know what i mean like kind of do impressions so when I heard people talking like on the phone, customer service wise, I was like, oh, I can do that shit. So um, when I applied, what's even crazier is like, fucking, I didn't know how to type. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know how to dress for a fucking interview. But one thing that, had me, that kept me confident is before I got out of YA, one of the uh, staff members was like, look, you're going up for board. And if you get out, that means you convinced because you got to convince the board. YA is different. It's not like, like the joint. Like you don't have a set date to get out. It's like you meet with the board and three people decide if you're gonna go home or not. And if you convince them, then fucking you gotta go home. And he's like, if you can convince three people to let you out, you can convince one person to give you a job. So I was like, I just kept that shit in the back of my mind. Even to this day, I can keep that shit in the back of my mind. Like whenever I go into a job interview, I always think like, man, I got this shit. Like I'm the most qualified motherfucker here. You know what I mean? Like. There's no way they're, they're going to give it to somebody else. So it's crazy because I, I, I didn't even dress fucking. I dressed in a pair of slacks, a button-up shirt. I didn't even tuck in the shirt. Uh, kept it down with a pair of lugs. Like, no dress shoes. Like, like just like I'm going to the club or some shit. You know what I mean? Like a cholo club. You know what I mean? So, fuck it. That's how I went dressed. And uh, I was able to talk to the guy. And, and they hired me. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I just told him, like, I just need an opportunity. You know what I mean? And fucking, they let me in. And it was cool at first. Like, there people weren't even that bad at first. Like, you get a few people talking shit now and then. But like I said, that was mainly because they were fucking, like, they were mad because we, like, assessed fees to their accounts or so, shit like that, right? So that that's justifiable. But there were, like, where I noticed when shit started changing is when uh, there was this news report coming out that Bank of America was giving credit cards to undocumented immigrants and let me tell you like right now like banks don't check immigration status because it's none of their business right so what happens is if you're here like on a work visa if you're here on a student visa like you're still eligible to get credit cards and and, and bank accounts right the banks can't really ask oh what are you doing here so it's like a lot of the times they'll be like oh you're you're fucking you they need like fucking mexican consulate uh identification or something like that something just to show who you are and uh but that was like the news kind of spin that shit like like fucking oh bank of america is giving credit cards to undocumented immigrants and fuck like that shit right away man like people would call in like there was a lot of people calling in to close their accounts like mainly people from the south and shit but they'd call in like what's your name i say oh my name is javier they're like, oh, you're not gonna like this, buddy. And they would start talking shit, right? Start calling me a wet back, a spick, and all kinds of shit. And just be like, they fucking, they'd be like, oh, Bank of America's hiring illegals now, too. Like, real fucked up shit. And like, you can't really go off on them. You're just like, whatever, man. Like, fuck it. So, one thing I did, I, I told my uh, manager at the time, I was like, hey, they're fucking like, it's, it's hard for me to even get a sale because as soon as they call in, they're hearing my, they're hearing my name and they're talking all kinds of shit, right? So could I change my name? Like just over the phone. And she said, yeah. So I got like a real generic like like white name and shit. You know what I mean? And fucking um, started using that shit. And fucking. It was crazy because I would uh, get my voice. Like right now I have like maybe like a Chicano accent or whatever. But when I'm on the phone, that shit isn't really there. And a lot of times you don't know how people look. So you're just going to go with whatever they say. So they would, they would believe that I was a white guy and shit. And it was crazy because fucking people would say some crazy ass shit. Like I remember I was talking to one guy. He's like, guys call myself Harvey on the phone and shit. He's like, where are you from, Harvey? I was like, oh, I'm from California. 
And he'd be like, I used to live in California, but you know what ruined California? I already knew what was coming, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, fuck. He's gonna say something, either Mexicans or blacks. He's gonna say something like that, right? Like, fuck it. He's like, those damn dirty illegal Mexicans. And he said it like that, like, he didn't say Mexicans, he said Mexicans. I was like, oh, this was trippy, right? So I started fucking, like, I wanted to crack up, but I did, I couldn't. And then he's like, you know who are the worst Mexicans? And I was like, oh, this motherfucker's crazy. He's like, those little Mexicans from El Salvador. And fuck, I put him on mute because I was like, oh, this guy's fucking ignorant, right? I started busting up like, wow, this fool's out of his fucking mind. Like, he's just fucking stupid, right? Like, ignorant as fuck. But we'd get calls like that all the time. Like, people would just talk shit. Like, fuck it. And like, but it was crazy because at that point, he didn't think he was talking shit. He just thought he was like preaching to one of the boys, you know what I mean? Like, just talking to one of the boys and shit. So fucking, yeah, that was pretty crazy. But we'd also get like crazy fucking people. I remember there was this lady who we talked to uh, during uh, that hurricane, what was it Hurricane Sandy in, in uh, the East Coast? And fucking, she was in Pennsylvania. And she, uh, I was in Escalation in the Escalation Gate at the time. And she was like, I need you to open up the bank. I need you to open up the bank. And I told her, man, we had it like, peep, there was an evacuation order. We can't, we can't open up the bank, like, the state, like they said that we need to evacuate, right? So we're not gonna open up the bank. And she's like, it's not even really raining. I said, it's barely dribbling. I was like, man, it's a hurricane. <laughs> like it's a fucking hurricane, you know what I mean? And she was like, I need you to get the, give me the branch manager's number so I could contact the branch manager and have them open up the bank. And I said, ma'am, I, I apologize, but I'm not gonna put the, the risk the lives of our customers or of our associates. At this time, we have an evacuation order that we're going to comply with. I apologize. And I guess she wanted she wanted to leave the country. She needed her passport. Or the bas- her passport was in her safety deposit box. So, yeah, she's like, fuck it. She was just like, she was nuts. And you would get people like that, like, with the most way out fucking request. And they would say shit like, there'd be people who said, like, I've been trying to get this fee waived for the last two hours. Like, what the fuck are you doing in the phone for two hours, first of all, right? And they're like, they'd be like, fucking, uh, I want you to, like, I I charge for my time. So I want you to not only weigh that fee, I want you to pay me $50 an hour so you owe me $100. Like, you're out of your mind. Like, we didn't fucking ask you. Like, I, but I would just kind of tell them, like, look, in order for us to compensate you, we'd have to agree for uh, to you really doing a service for us or providing us with something. In this case, there was no agreement, so we're not going to be able to provide you with any kind of compensation, right? And they go fucking, they go nuts. And like I said, like, and it's crazy because a lot of the times, like, I'd waive the fee. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's not my money. Like, I don't care. Like, fuck Bank of America, right? Like, I really don't give a shit. But, like, they would just go off, and they wouldn't even give me a chance to talk a lot of times. So I'm like, whatever, man. Yeah, they just go fucking crazy and shit. And like I said, I'm not Mr. Bank of America. I never was. I don't even work there anymore. Like, I left after 11 years. But, like, they would just go fucking nuts. And they would really think that they were tough guys. Like, they, like, one time I talked to this guy from New York. And he's like, hey, could you weigh this fee for me? And he called me Poppy. I remember I was tripped out of that shit. Poppy. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, I thought that shit was a TV shit, right? Like, I didn't think people really talk like that and shit. But uh, he was like, yeah, could you weigh this fee for me? So I said, fuck it. I weighed the fee for him, and uh, I was gonna leave it at that, but he wanted to fucking tell me, like, I couldn't pay my bill because I was in Rikers. I guess he was in fucking, like, Rikers Island and shit, right? I was like, oh, wow, how scary. Like, you gotta, like, make fucking, like, fucking uh, uh, conversation, and you gotta pretend, like, like, you can't, like, really say that you know that kind of shit, right? Or you've been to that kind of shit. And you're like, man, you're probably a little schoolboy. You're probably a little good guy. You would never survive a Rikers. I'm like, man, fuck off. We'll fucking slice you up. You know what I mean? Who the fuck you think you are? You know what I mean? Well, fuck, I can't tell them that shit, but it was funny because they don't know who they're talking to, right? So, a lot of the times they would just act like they were super fucking tough guys. And they would say shit that, and that's one thing that kind of kept me calm, too. Because I knew, like, they wouldn't talk to me like this in person. Like, if they try to talk to me like that in person, like, like there'd be some kind of, like, we had to, they establish a boundary and establish a line of respect, you know what I mean? We would have to. 
And, uh, but it was crazy. They would just talk all kinds of shit, like, and, uh, sometimes you'd have fucking people. One time I had this guy, t I'm not lying, we were on the phone for like three fucking hours. And he kept telling me, I was in the escalation gate again. And he's like, I want to talk to your manager. And I told him, my manager's gone. Because for real, like, I would go in at, what was it, like 12? From 12 to like, 12.30 to 9, I think that's what I work. And um, my manager would leave at 4. So, in the night, like, there was, that's it. Like, there was no escalation past me. So I, I told him, like, hey, I can, I can get your number and have my manager call you back. Cause fucking uh, she left for the night. She won't be back till about seven in the morning. And then he's like, "Nah, I'll wait. I'll wait." I was like, "You're gonna wait till tomorrow?" He's like, "If that's what it takes." I was like, "All right, man." So we sit on the phone for fucking like, like three hours. And I kept checking in with them, like, "Still here with you?" Just letting you know, I'm still here. And I'm really not saying shit, cause like, what else could I say? Like, I told him everything I needed to tell him. And finally, about the third hour, I was like, "Still here with you?" He's like. You know how much longer it's gonna be? I said, till my manager gets in line? Like, yes, and I, I told you she's not coming back till tomorrow. And he's like, so you didn't get a manager? You ever tried to get a manager? I was like, no, I told you. Like, like I don't have another manager available. You're gonna have to wait till tomorrow. And he was like, fuck that, I'll call back. I was like, look it, I'll have my manager call you back. You already been on the phone with me for three hours. There's no need to continue this. My manager will call you back. Like, I'm trying to look out for him, you know what I mean? Like. Like, don't stay on the phone for the rest of the fucking night. Like, you've already wasted a huge part of your day. That's what I felt like telling him, like, fool, listen to me. You're wasting your fucking time. I'll get my manager to call you. Don't waste any more time on the phone. Like, you're you're just fucking, like, you're only doing it to yourself. And then he's like, nah, fuck that. I'll call back. I'll, I'll get a manager. I was like, oh, fuck, this is trippy, man. So, so yeah, so that's what we dealt with a lot of, like, crazy people weird ass people and shit yeah there was even one guy i forgot about that shit like like he was just a fucking weirdo it was crazy because he lived close too he lived in Dwarty. and uh he's like javier are there any females there i could talk to and i was like well like there's nobody else available right now i, I, I could talk to you and he's like javier i just want to let you know i'm jacking off to you and i was like oh what the fuck i'm like oh hell no nah. So I tell my manager, like, hey, this fool's fucking trippy. Like, like, I want to hang up on this fool. Like, he's fucking going with some way out shit, right? And she's like, let me talk to him. So she gets on the phone, and that's what he wanted. He wanted a female. Hey, oh, he started going crazy on her, too. But it's crazy because his account was already closed. Like, they had already closed it. Like, the bank could close your account if they think, like, you're a fucking... Basically, if they think you're an asshole, they don't want to do business with you. They could close that shit. And they had closed it because he was just, like, lewd and fucking nasty and shit. So, um, yeah, she had read the notes and shit and seen he was a fucking asshole. And it was just crazy, right? Like, especially when I swear graveyard, you'd have a gang of crazy motherfuckers calling, saying some crazy ass way out shit. But yeah, that was my time at Bank of America. In the end, I was just kind of like over it. Like, ah, I'm done with this fucking place. Uh, took a leave, extended that shit. And then, uh, yeah, fucking, got, they got me for a job abandonment. Never went back to shit. But yeah, that was the end of it there. Now I'm walking to a new job. But uh, that was my time at, at Bank of America. It was pretty trip, pretty much a trip. And fucking talk to you guys later. I'm out. Peace.